Heavy equipment refers to heavy-duty vehicles, specially designed for executing construction tasks, most frequently ones involving earthwork operations. They are also known as heavy machines, heavy trucks, construction equipment, engineering equipment, heavy vehicles, or heavy hydraulics. They usually comprise five equipment systems, implement, traction, structure, powertrain, control and information. Heavy equipment functions through the mechanical advantage of a simple machine, the ratio between input force applied and force exerted is multiplied. Some equipment uses hydraulic drives as a primary source of motion. History The use of heavy equipment has a long history. The ancient Roman engineer Vitruvius, 1st century BCE, gave descriptions of heavy equipment and cranes in ancient Rome in his treatise De Architectura. The pile driver was invented around 1500. The first tunneling shield was patented by Marc Isambard Brunel in 1818. Topic: <laughs> From horses through steam to diesel. Until the 19th century and into the early 20th century heavy machines were drawn under human or animal power. With the advent of portable steam-powered engines the drawn machine precursors were reconfigured with the new engines, such as the combine harvester. The design of a core tractor evolved around the new steam power source into a new machine core traction engine, that can be configured as the steam tractor and the steamroller. During the 20th century, internal combustion engines became the major power source of heavy equipment. Kerosene and ethanol engines were used, but today diesel engines are dominant. Mechanical transmission was in many cases replaced by hydraulic machinery. The early 20th century also saw new electric-powered machines such as the forklift. Caterpillar Inc. is a present-day brand from these days, starting out as the Holt Manufacturing Company. The first mass-produced heavy machine was the Fordson Tractor in 1917. The first commercial continuous track vehicle was the 1901 Lombard Steam Log Hauler. The use of tracks became popular for tanks during World War I, and later for civilian machinery like the bulldozer. The largest engineering vehicles and mobile land machines are bucket wheel excavators, built since the 1920s. Until almost the 20th century, one simple tool constituted the primary earth-moving machine, the hand shovel, moved with animal and human-powered, sleds, barges, and wagons. This tool was the principal method by which material was either sidecast or elevated to load a conveyance, usually a wheelbarrow, or a cart or wagon drawn by a draft animal. In antiquity, an equivalent of the hand shovel or hoe and head basket—and masses of men—were used to move earth to build civil works. Builders have long used the inclined plane, levers, and pulleys to place solid building materials, but these labor-saving devices did not lend themselves to earth moving, which required digging, raising, moving, and placing loose materials. The two elements required for mechanized earth moving, then as now, were an independent power source and off-road mobility, neither of which could be provided by the technology of that time. Container cranes were used from the 1950s and onwards, and made containerization possible. Nowadays such is the importance of this machinery, some transport companies have developed specific equipment to transport heavy construction equipment to and from sites. <laughs> Types These subdivisions, in this order, are the standard heavy equipment categorization. Topic. Images Military engineering vehicles Topic. Implements and hydromechanical work tools Topic. Traction, off-the-road tires and tracks Heavy equipment requires specialized tires for various construction applications. While many types of equipment have continuous tracks applicable to more severe service requirements, tires are used where greater speed or mobility is required. An understanding of what equipment will be used for during the life of the tires is required for proper selection. Tire selection can have a significant impact on production and unit cost. There are three types of off-the-road tires, transport for earthmoving machines, work for slow-moving earthmoving machines, and load and carry for transporting as well as digging. 
Off highway tires have six categories of service C compactor E Earthmover, G Grader, L Loader, LS Log Skidder, and ML Mining and Logging. Within these service categories are various tread types designed for use on hard packed surface, soft surface, and rock. Tires are a large expense on any construction project. Careful consideration should be given to prevent excessive wear or damage. Topic: <laughs> Powertrain. Topic: <laughs> <laughs> Control and information. The control and information systems. These systems enable the operator to direct and control all the other systems and provide information to guide operations or to monitor the performance and health of the equipment. Topic: <laughs> <laughs> Heavy equipment operator. A heavy equipment operator drives and operates heavy equipment used in engineering and construction projects. Typically only skilled workers may operate heavy equipment, and there is specialized training for learning to use heavy equipment. Much publication about heavy equipment operators focuses on improving safety for such workers. The field of occupational medicine researches and makes recommendations about safety for these and other workers in safety-sensitive positions. <laughs> <laughs> equipment cost Due to the small profit margins on construction projects it is important to maintain accurate records concerning equipment utilization, repairs and maintenance. The two main categories of equipment costs are ownership cost and operating cost. <laughs> ownership cost To classify as an ownership cost an expense must have been incurred regardless of if the equipment is used or not. These costs are as follows Depreciation can be calculated several ways, the simplest is the straight line method. The annual depreciation is constant, reducing the equipment value annually. The following are simple equations paraphrased from the Pevrifoy and Schechneider text. <laughs> Operating cost For an expense to be classified as an operating cost, it must be incurred through use of the equipment. These costs are as follows The biggest distinction from a cost standpoint is if a repair is classified as a major repair or a minor repair. A major repair can change the depreciable equipment value due to an extension in service life, while a minor repair is normal maintenance. How a firm chooses to cost major and minor repairs vary from firm to firm depending on the costing strategies being used. Some firms will charge only major repairs to the equipment while minor repairs are costed to a project. Another common costing strategy is to cost all repairs to the equipment and only frequently replaced where items are excluded from the equipment cost. Many firms keep their costing structure closely guarded as it can impact the bidding strategies of their competition. In a company with multiple semi-independent divisions, the equipment department often wants to classify all repairs as minor and charge the work to a job, therefore improving their profit from the equipment. Topic. Models Die cast metal promotional scale models of heavy equipment are often produced for each vehicle to give to prospective customers. These are typically in 150 scale. The popular manufacturers of these models are Conrad and NZG in Germany, even for US vehicles. Topic. Notable manufacturers The largest 10 construction equipment manufacturers in 2015 based on revenue data of top 50 manufacturers published by KHL Group Other manufacturers include See also Construction equipment theft Non-road engine Associated equipment distributors, the trade association for heavy equipment distributors <laughs>